Hi everybody and welcome to Wednesday's reading. I believe the last time we read, uh, Percy, Annabeth, and Grover had just set the animals free and decided to get out of the 18-wheeler. So let's pick up from there. And also I believe they were in Las Vegas. Here we go. We stumbled out into the desert afternoon. It was like 110 degrees, easy, and we must have looked like deep fried vagrants. But everybody was too interested in the wild animals to pay that much attention to us. We passed the Monte Carlo and the MGM. We passed the pyramids, a private, a pirate ship, and the Statue of Liberty, which was a pretty small replica, but it still made me homesick. I wasn't sure what we were looking for. Maybe just a place to get out of the heat for a few minutes, to find a sandwich, a glass of lemonade, and make a new plan for getting west. We must have taken a wrong turn because we found ourselves at a dead end, standing in front of the Lotus Hotel and Casino. The entrance was a huge neon flower, the petals lighting up and blinking. No one was going in or out, but the glittering chrome doors were open, spilling out in air conditioning that smelled like flowers, lotus blossom maybe. I had never spelled, smelled one, so I wasn't sure. The doorman smiled at us. Hey kids, you look tired. You want to come in and sit down? I had learned to be suspicious the last week or so. I figured anybody might be a monster or a god. You just couldn't tell. But this guy was normal. One look at him and I could see. Besides, I was so relieved to hear somebody who sounded sympathetic that I nodded and said we'd love to come inside. Inside, we took one look around and Grover said, whoa. The whole lobby was one giant game room. And I'm not talking about cheesy old Pac-Man games or slot machines. There was an indoor water slide snaking around the glass elevator, which went straight up at least 40 floors. There was a climbing wall on the side of the building, an indoor bungee jumping bridge. There were virtual reality suits with working laser guns and a hundred of video and hundreds, hundreds of video games, one each the size of a widescreen TV. Basically, you name it, this place had it. There were a few other kids playing, but not that many. No waiting for the games. There were waitresses and snack bars all around, serving every kind of food you could imagine. Hey, a bellhop said. At least I guessed he was a bellhop. He wore a white, a white and yellow Hawaiian shirt with lotus designs, shorts and flip-flops. Welcome to the Lotus Casino. Here's your room key. I stammered, uh, but, uh, no, no, he said laughing. The bill's taken care of. No extra charges, no tips. Just go to the top floor, room 4001. You don't need anything. And if you do, like extra bubbles for the hot tub or skeet targets for the shooting range or whatever, just call the front, front desk. Here are your Lotus cash cards. They work in the restaurants and all games and rides. He handed us each a green plastic credit card. I knew there must be some mistake. Obviously, he thought we were some millionaire's kids. But I took the card and said, how much is on here? His eyebrows knit together. What do you mean? I mean, when does it run out of cash? He laughed. Oh, you're making a joke. Hey, that's cool. Enjoy your stay. We took the elevator upstairs and checked out our room. It was a suite with three separate bedrooms, a bar stocked with candy, sodas, and chips, a hotline to room service, fluffy towels and water beds with feather pillows, a big screen television with satellite and high-speed internet. The balcony had its own hot tub, and sure enough, there was a skeet shooting machine and a shotgun so you could launch clay pigeons right over the Las Vegas skyline and plug them with your gun. I didn't see how that would be legal, but I thought it was pretty cool. The view over the strip in the desert was amazing, although I doubted we'd ever find time to look at the view with a room like this. Oh goodness, Annabeth said. This place is sweet, Grover said. Absolutely sweet. There were clothes in the closet and they fit me. I frowned thinking this was a little strange. I threw Aries backpack in the trash can. Wouldn't need that anymore. When we left, I would just charge a new one to the hotel. I took a shower, which felt awesome after a week of grimy travel. I changed clothes and ate a bag of chips and drank three Cokes and came out feeling better than I had in a long time. I had a dream or something. I had had a dream or something. I needed to talk to my friends but I was sure it could wait. I came out of the bedroom and found that Annabeth and Grover had also showered and changed clothes. Grover was eating potato chips to his heart content while Annabeth cranked up the National Geographic channel. 
All these stations, I told her, and you turn on the National Geographic. Are you insane? It's interesting. I feel good, Grover said. I love this place. Without his even realizing it, the wings sprouted out of his shoes and lifted him a foot off the ground and back down again. So what now, Annabeth said? Sleep? Grover and I looked at each other and grinned. We both held up our green plastic lotus cash cards. Playtime, I said. I couldn't remember the last time I'd had so much fun. I came from a relatively poor family. Our idea of a splurge was eating out at Burger King and renting a video. A five-star Vegas hotel? Forget it. I bungee jumped the lobby five or six times, did the water slide, snowboarded the artificial ski slope, and played virtual reality laser tag and FBI sharpshooter. I saw Grover a few times going from game to game. He really liked the reverse hunter thing, where the deer go out and shoot the rednecks. And I saw Annabeth playing trivia games and other brainiac stuff. They had this huge 3D spin game, sim game. You build your own city, and you could actually see the holographic buildings rise on the display board. I didn't think much of it, but Annabeth loved it. I'm not sure when I first realized something was wrong. Probably when I noticed the guy standing next to me at the VR sharpshooters. He was about 13, I guess, but his clothes were weird. I thought he was some Elvis impersonator's son. He wore bell-bottom jeans and a red t-shirt with black piping, and his hair was permed and gelled like a New Jersey girl's on homecoming night. We played a game of sharpshooters together, and he said, Groovy, man. Been here two weeks. The games keep getting better and better. Groovy? Later, while we were talking, I said something like was sick, and he looked at me kind of startled, like he had never heard that word used that way before. He said his name was Darren, but as soon as I started asking him questions, he got bored with me and started to go back to the computer screen. I said, hey, Darren, what? What year is it? He frowned at me. In the game? No, in real life. He had to think about it. 1977. No, I said, getting a little scared. Really? Hey, man, bad vibes. I got a game happening. And after that, he totally ignored me. I started talking to people and found it wasn't easy. They were glued to the TV screen or the video game or their food or whatever. I found a guy that told me it was 1985. Another guy told me it was 1993. They all claimed they had only been there very a few days, a few weeks at most. They didn't realize and they didn't know. They didn't care. Then it occurred to me, how long have I been here? It only seemed like a couple hours, but was it? I tried to remember why we were here. We were going to Los Angeles. We were supposed to find the entrance to the underworld. My mother... For a scary second, I had trouble remembering her name. Sally. Sally Jackson. I had to find her. I had to stop Hades from causing World War III. I found Annabeth still building her city. Come on, I told her. We've got to get out of here. No response. I shook her. Annabeth! She looked up, annoyed. What? We need to leave. Leave? What are you talking about? I just got the towers. This place is a trap. She didn't respond until I shook her again. What? Listen, the underworld, our quest? Oh, come on, Percy, just a few more minutes. Annabeth, there are people here from 1977. Kids who never aged. You check in and you stay forever. So, she asked, can you imagine a better place? I grabbed her wrist and yanked her away from the game. Hey! She screamed and hit me, but nobody else even bothered looking at us. They were too busy. I made her look directly in my eyes and I said, spiders, large, hairy spiders. <laughs> that jarred her. Her vision cleared. Oh my gods, she said. How long have we? I don't know, but we've got to find Grover. We went searching and found him still playing virtual deer hunter. Grover, we both shouted. He said, die human, die silly, polluting, nasty person. Grover. He turned the plastic gun at me and started clicking as if I was just another image from the screen. I looked at Annabeth, and together we took Grover by the arms and dragged him away. His flying shoes sprang to life and started tugging his legs in the other direction as he shouted, No! I just got a new level! No! The Lotus Bellhop hurried up to us. Well, now, are you ready for your platinum cards? We're leaving, I told him. Such a shame, he said. 
I got the feeling that he really meant it, and that we'd be breaking his heart if we went. We just added an entire new floor of games for the Platinum Card members. He held up the cards, and I wanted one. I knew that if I took one, I'd never leave. <clears throat> I'd stay here, happy forever, playing games forever, and soon I'd forget my mom, my quest, and maybe even my own name. I'd be playing Virtual Rifleman, rifleman with Groovy da Disco Darren forever. Grover reached for the card, but Annabeth yanked back his arm and said, No, thanks. We walked towards the door, and as we did, the smell of the food and the sounds of games seemed to get more and more inviting. I thought about our room upstairs. We could just stay the night, sleep in a real bed for once. Then we burst through the door of the Lotus Casino and ran down the sidewalk. It felt like afternoon, about the same time of day we had gone into the casinos, but something was wrong. The weather had completely changed. It was stormy, with heat lightning flashing out in the desert. Aries' backpack was slung over my shoulder, which was odd because I was sure I had thrown it in the trash can in room 4001. At the moment, I had other problems to worry about. I ran to the nearest newspaper stand and read the year first. Thank the gods, it was the same year it had been when we went in. But then I noticed the date, June 20th. We had been in the Lotus Casino for five days. We only had one day left until the summer solstice. One day to complete our quest. That's it for tonight. We will pick up chapter 17 on Friday, which is We Shop for Waterbeds. I wonder if they'll make it to Los Angeles and the summer solstice on time. I'll see you then. Bye.